Hello, this is the String Guy here. I'm going to do a little bit of different kind of review today than what I did before. Before I did new equipment. This is going to be a vintage guitar. Um, this is going to be a Fender Montera. It's part of the Fender California series. They made them from 1990 to 1994. I can't find any stats to tell you based on the serial number which year this was made. I just know it was made in that time frame. So this is either 30, this is anywhere from 27 to 31 years old. So it's an all solid wood guitar. So its tone is probably start, probably picked up. It's probably better than it was when it was new. I've only been able to find a scarce amount of information about the Monteras. All I can tell you is that they came with a solid spruce top and mahogany backsides and neck. Now this is considered a dreadnought. And it definitely in this way, in this way, it looks like a dreadnought in shape with a cutaway. But if you look at it sideways, it's not nearly as deep as your typical dreadnought. And you notice, it's not an optical illusion, it's, it has a rounded back. And that helps in many ways. It's a little thinner than some of the guitars, and I like that about it. It's a little thinner. And, but that rounded back helps project. And you notice that sound hole. Take a good look. It's oval. So it's a little unique in that. It's got a nice binding around there, and then it's got like a little rosette thing around the binding. Also around the sound hole. Uh, now look, and and look at that headstock. They, they went for the Fender look. Fender headstock, Fender tuners. Now this is made, this guitar was made in Korea, which this was made during like the heyday when, when Korea was really stepping up. That's when Samsung started to dominate the market, things like that. So this was, I mean, de definitely Korea had hit, hit their stride in making quality items and they haven't quit since. Uh, I've never seen a, a, a well, I can't say I never, I, well, I have never seen a poorly made Korean guitar. I'm not saying they don't exist, but you I mean, you look at the, the construction of this thing, it's top notch. You look at everything inside there, it's tiny. It's a great, it's a great guitar. Now, let me tell you a few things about my backstory when I bought this so, so I can explain a few things. Um, when I bought it, it was on Craigslist, and this personal son had been their grandfather's guitar, and they were selling out his estate. He had passed away. Their grandfather spent his last couple of years in a nursing home, so before he went, he wanted to make sure the neck wouldn't get bowed or something. He took all the strings off so they wouldn't get lost, and he took the saddle out so it wouldn't get lost, and he took the bridge pins out so they wouldn't get lost. Well, guess what? They got lost. <laughs> so when I bought it, so when they were selling it, it was without strings, without a saddle, and without uh, bridge pins. So I asked them to come down quite a bit in price, and they came down in price. And so I bought it. At first, I was going to try to do it myself. But then I looked at the width here in this, uh, for the saddle. It was an unusual width. I couldn't find any saddle that would fit. So I took it to my local guitar shop. And uh, he said, I'll have to make one and I'll have to put a shim in there to get it right because I can't find one that size. And I'm like, okay, because I want to be able to play it. And he puts the new bridge pins in. And somewhere along the line, the nut had gotten chipped. So when he did work right, he put a new bone nut, a new bone saddle in here. Not new bone, a new bone saddle. So he put a bone saddle, bone saddle nut and put did Dario strings on it for me, and he did a setup wise. I checked, got the action just perfect. And the good part about the good bad part about it, I took it there, and he had like put it among his stuff to work on. He and he had to play. He's very popular for doing getting repart, guitar work done. So he had a lot of work, and somehow it got pushed to the back, 
And I didn't hear nothing from him for, it was like six months later, I finally hear from him. He says, oh, I apologize, I got your guitar done. So he cut me a really a lot of slack, not nearly what he would have charged to do that because he put both nuts on, put a nut in the saddle and, um, and pins, put strings on it, and he charged me $70. Well, you know that's more than $70. So, so anyways, but the only bad thing, in fact, this guitar has like no blemishes anywhere on it. No, no dings, no nothing. What? The only bad, I mean, it did have a chip on that nut and that's been replaced. The only flaw in this thing, oh, went put a new battery in it, tried to play it. It came with this Fender pickup. I can't, can't get any amplification out of it. It just doesn't seem to want to work. And that, that's the only thing that disappoints me about this. And I'll be honest with you, I originally bought this to flip it because I saw one in eBay, same color, same everything, and it had a few dings on it. They showed it. It, it actually sold for a couple bucks under $900. And I didn't have near that in this. But, you know, I could, I'm sure if I went to somebody, they could probably get a, some fisherman or some, somebody probably make some kind of, you know, electronics that would fit that size. But that wouldn't be original. Because chances of getting this are slim to none, you know. So, that wouldn't be original. I don't know that it would fetch as much. And to be honest with you, I rarely like to play an acoustic guitar plugged in because the piezo pickup, there any things? Piezo, I mean, you get a, you can get a nice sound, but trouble is, it's not the sound you hear of it acoustically because it's not getting all the, you know, the things like that arch back. It's not picking up all those nuances. And I don't move around the stage. I would rather play my guitar mic. I'd rather play with a mic, you know, sitting out about 12 to 18 inches straight out for my sound for all. That's the way I prefer to play. So for me, I could care less. If I would keep this, and, I, and I'm on the fence about keeping this. I really like this guitar, but I don't love this guitar. Uh, for the last year, and I put it for this review into, back into standard tuning just so I could play a little things, just so you could hear it a little bit. Uh, but for the, about the last year, I've had it an open G, and I've been playing slide on it. And, and it doesn't do a bad job playing slide, so, you know, I'm just torn about this guitar. Probably if it had that pickup, well, probably if I had that pickup in it, I probably would have flipped it, because I, I could have made a nice, tidy profit on it. But without the pickup, until I pay somebody, until I get another pickup in it, Here's the problem. So I buy a decent pickup and pay somebody, because I don't have the fingers to, to, to do that myself. So I pay somebody to put in a decent pickup, I'm going to be talking $300. And I don't know that with a different pickup in that I could fetch. And I've seen a couple other ones. There's not many. A couple others when Reaper went for six to 700 and they weren't nearly in as nice shape as this. But I don't know until I put the pickup in it, a, a different brand of pickup in it, I don't know that it would fetch what it would not be original. And so I tell you, well, taking what I originally put into this and the pickup, I'm looking at possibly only breaking even or maybe making 50 bucks, 100 tops. And yeah, yeah, I mean, if I could find an original, if I found them out there that was in bad shape and could take the pickup work and put it in there, yeah, I'd be happy, but I don't, I. And if I'm only going to break even, then I want to keep it. <laughs> you know, no. Now, somebody came along and betrayed me a, a nice tube amp. Yeah, it would go because I've been looking for tube amps. But I do like this guitar because it's really pretty. When you look at the colors, it's really, really, really pretty guitar. Very pretty guitar. And it plays nice. And a guy like me with my big belly, this thinner body but yet it still projects good because of that arched back and it plays nice and doesn't sound too bad either it it has a nice sound to it it really does have a nice sound
Now, I'm not a great guitar player. I'm, I'm still learning. I've only been playing for three years, so. Okay, there you got a chance to hear a little bit of the sound of this. Oh, hear, hear that sustain? Hear it still rhyming? Just now finishing off. It has great sustain. The wood on it, actually it's still humming just a little bit. The wood on it, it's great sustain. I mean, it's real made, made real well. Like, you see, you can just barely see the, the like where the neck joint here is. And if there is one up at the head, up at, yeah, up here, I can't, oh, I can just barely see it. And they must have laid their, they didn't do like on a fender, there's, on a, the other fenders, there's no skunk strap. Uh, but there is, I mean, there is a truss rod in there. So they must have just put their fretboard over. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's ebony. Now, the fret, does have dot markers on the side and it has these little inlays in there they look like 
It looks like a little crosses in there. And this thing has no frets. I mean, the frets, they're really well dressed in this. From what I saw, this was considered, like I said, a Fender made this California series. Each one was named after a beach. Like this, they had a Montero. I think they had a Venice. Um, they might have had a Malibu, I can't remember. But each one was named after a California beach, part of their California series. And from what I could see, back in 1990, the MSRP on this was like 579 So, wasn't a high-end guitar, but certainly wasn't a low-end either. You know, it was, it was a, for, well, for Fender. See, Fender doesn't get much love for their acoustics. I mean, granted, they don't have acoustics that are anywhere in the caliber of a Martin or a Gibson or a Collings or, or um, a Taylor. You know, they're not in that league. But uh, they do have a lot of, a lot, they do have quite a few very decent lower end offers. Even today, a lot of the, for entry level and student level, they have a lot of great value guitars that I've played several of them that are bad. But I'll tell you what, this is definitely the best Fender acoustic I've ever played. Not that I've played tons of them, but I've played Fender Acoustics. And this, if you ever find one of these California series, I, occasionally I've seen another one. It wasn't this model. It was, um, I think it was a Venice that was in one, the guitar shop where I had this repair that he had one in a, on consignment. Uh, you occasionally see these on reverb. They're good deals. I mean, they're good guitars. Because at the time, Fender was trying to make a play into the acoustic market. They were going after that, they called them the California series. And like I said, they made them a little thinner and stuff. They they tried to, they ran ads of people playing them on the beach and things. And and I think that's part of why, but I love the way the color in this is aged. I've seen the pictures of the original. They were, they weren't quite as deep a color as this, but I just love this color. It's, it's really hard to get a single picture. Like I've tried to take a picture of this, but it's really hard to get a picture. You always have to give people a series of pictures to really get a deep appreciation for this. I mean, that arched back is done beautifully. And, and if you notice, it's sort of got like some flaming in there. So, you know, and they did a nice job with the strap buttons mount. I mean, it's really a nice guitar. It just bugs me that the pickup that this amp preamp thing doesn't work. It has a nine volt battery in there, and that, well, the other thing I didn't like about it, if you had to change the battery, you have to you definitely have to really loosen the strings up or take some strings off to change the battery. But even though I don't ever put, I mean, my other acoustic did it also has electronics. I don't plug it in. I I did a couple times just to see if it worked, you know, on it. But um, it just it bugs me. To have something that, even if it's a feature you don't work, doesn't. And, and if I go to sell it, if I would go to sell it as is, because that people are going to try to knock it way down, way down in price. Well, the pickup doesn't work. Even though they probably, even though, you know, I talk to their players, most people do not plug their acoustics in. I'd say three quarters of people I've talked to, how often did you plug your acoustic in? And almost all of them said the same thing I did. Uh, I plugged it a couple times just to, just to try it, but most of the time they play acoustically, you know. But, but having said that, they all say the same thing, well, if I ever go to resell it, so I'm probably never going to sell this thing, you know. <laughs> but, but I said I might would trade it. I and mean, if somebody came along, you know, if somebody would come along and offer me $500, yeah, I'd probably sell it, you know. But I doubt that's going to happen, and I'm not going to play around, and I don't want to ship it anywhere. You know, it would have to be somebody local. And, and so the chances of me finding somebody, because I definitely would not, the only way I would get rid of this thing is somebody would have to give me at least $500, because it's worth that to me. I mean, to me, for less than $500, no, I'd rather have it, because I, I do play it. I do play it regularly. Mostly I play it slide. And, uh, and it fits comfortable slide, and the neck just feels comfortable. Oh, and the neck. It would be like a C shape, a modern C shape, but it, it's it's a fast playing neck, and the feel of it's good. And like I said, it just bugs me about that amp, even though that's the way we are as humans. Even though it does, I don't wouldn't use it. Because here's the funny thing: if I spent the money and got it, and that's the other reason why I don't spend the money. Because if I spent the money and got it replaced, I would never use it anyways. 
But it would just be to satisfy myself that I replaced it and it's fully functional. But what I can recommend, if you ever found one of these California series guitars, and to be honest with you, the only real thing I've seen different, like in the Venice and some of those, is sort of like the appointments, you know, and different color options and things like that. Like I said, for some reason they made an extra wide nut on these original, you know, so, but the, uh, and then all the tuners on these things are really nice. Like I said, they're Fender branded tuners. They say Fender right on, they're not off brand. And to me, it looks like the same tuners you would have bought if you had bought a Telecaster or something like that. You know, it's the head stock, I would put it somewhere between it, it looks to me like if a Stratocaster and a Telecaster had a, had a baby, that's what their headstock would look like. That's about my best description on that. You know, but the, the amazing thing is this thing looks as nice as probably the day it was sold, or maybe even better, the color may have aged a little bit nicer, but I mean, there's no checking, no cracking. This thing is just plum beautiful. And, you know, so... So anyways, that's my review. It's a little bit different, and it's probably not going to get watched by too many people, unless there happens to be somebody out there who owns a, you know, a California series or owns a Montera. You know, I have no idea how many Fender ever sold these. My guess is they probably didn't sell a ton of them, and uh, because just simply because Fender, great electronics. In fact, my favorite electric guitars are Fenders. I like Gibsons, but I pref but Fenders are, you know, the Fender Telecaster. And the Fender Mustang, and the Fender Jaguar, really get it for me. I, I like a Stratocaster, okay, but that's not the. I mean, my order of preference on Fenders is Telecaster, Mustang, Jaguar, or Jaguar Mustang. Uh, in fact, that's my next guitar to purchase. Will probably be a Mustang because the Jaguars are just a little pricier, and I really like the way they do the electronics on a on a Mustang a little better. So that's probably going to be my next guitar purchase. But anyways. I hope you I hope you enjoyed this video and again go out make some music share share some music with the world and and if you and if you did enjoy it just give me a like and and if you like the stuff I do go ahead and subscribe it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe and it might help me someday I don't know I probably never get the thousands of subscribers you need to ever get monetized so this is just something I just do for fun and I do this on some of my days off. I make a video. All right, you have a great day and play some music.